Hi everybody, I'm Doc Shocker, and welcome to Alan Wake. Uh, in our last episode, we made it to the Mirror Lake Overlook to meet with Mott, uh, who was attacked by the darkness, and uh, were it not for having a road flare, um, ourselves would have probably met a horrible fate to said darkness. Um, we fell in the lake and woke up here at Hartman's facility, his clinic, his retreat, his barnwood-inspired hellscape. Um, holy man, everything is just... okay. Anyway, we're going on a walk, gonna have a look around, gonna discover some stuff about the place. Um, yeah, Dr. Emil Hartman, Ph.D., the author of best-selling Creative Flow is groundbreaking technique, engagement therapy, and the flow er, explained in his own words. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. This corridor is for patients. Most of them aren't here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip, except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. This way, Alan. Anderson. Soleil, Lane, Emerson, Emerson, Lane, Desolet. I don't, know, I don't know if you remember that band from the, uh, the late 1970s now, rock supergroup. Experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this: Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned, and you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped, and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. We go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying, but under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. Yep, yeah, we're we're alike. We're just alike. Yep, that's yep. In tenebrae cadre. Beyond the shadow you settle for, there's a miracle illuminated. T Z. In memory of a dear friend, and a poet. Must be Thomas Zane we speak of. I never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way. Follow me. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now we're in control. 
Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. All, Hartman obviously loved his own voice. His words echoed madly yourself. inside my head. But I, can't I dug my nails into myself. the palms of my hands to stay you focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. Come along. Let's go inside. Here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors, man versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. Yeah, Alan just does not strike me as someone impressed by hunting trophies, but... I'm a real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on video Elbow games. Strike. Oh, it's yeah. trash, of yeah. course, but yeah. it does involve I'll some small head. creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. Who did we have out here? Hmm. Oh, hello. I've painted you. Okay. I was just struck by inspiration a couple of days ago. <sighs> Dr. Hartman wanted me to paint landscapes, and that's what I was doing. But now I've been doing these things, a lot of them. The images just keep coming. Dr. Hartman likes them. He has them in his office. Yeah? He's very proud of me. He says I'm getting much better. I think I'm getting better. Well, I'm I'm well, happy I to hear. I better start wrapping this up. The storm is almost here. Look at that. I'd hate to be out there tonight. Well, I'll let you know all about it when I'm out there tonight. Cuz that is simply too foreboding for me to not be. I might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. What do we have here? Welcome to Cauldron Lake Lodge. We're here to give you the specialized help you need. However, please observe the following. Please ask friends and family to schedule visits beforehand to ensure they don't interfere with your therapy and or periods of creativity. Also, please respect your fellow patient's need for privacy and personal space, especially when engaged by their creative processes. Be patient. Typically, our patients have long-term creative problems and won't be solved overnight. Give yourself permission to take the time you need. Bear in mind that you're voluntarily receiving treatment that has been specifically tailored for you. Engagement therapy trademark and its sister method, the flow trademark, work better when they are actively engaged in shaping them. If you have any concerns, please don't hesitate to, for, er, to voice them. All right, square chin, just look out. What do we My have? My killing me. There's a storm coming. It springs. Oh, what a storm. I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. 
And these two are the Anderson brothers, Odin and Tor. They had a... how should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They are well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. No, that won't do. I'm so sorry to cut this short for now, Alan. The power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Don't you think? I think he needs like to be to busted in the nose again. Oh, he loved to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah. Being crazy is a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla! We wrote it all down, lest we need to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. Zane could feel the poems, taking form, shaping things. As he experimented, he imagined he could almost feel the power surging through the keys of the typewriter. It exhilarated him. But there was fear, too. If not for his young assistant, Emil, he would have given it up. But Emil convinced him otherwise. He, too, had a way with words. Emil, My hey. was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, got any booze on you? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> we have guys. a stash of the special stuff at the farm. Our own formula, local ingredients, medicine, clears your head right up. Makes you remember like moonbeams on the brain. Oh, I just noticed leather patches on the elbows. That's not very rock and roll. Tom just lost is all. Baba Yaga got to him too, the damn witch. She used us all, taken from all of us. Took my thunder, the witch. And my ravens, what was it? What were they? Memory and thought, the hag. She took something from you too, didn't she? That's what she does. Um, we're better off. This place, the lake, it gives you power. If you're a creator, an artist, a god. Nightmares shifted in their sleep in the darkness of the lake. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. She makes sure it comes out twisted and wrong. Just ask the lamp lady. She knows what happened to that other rider. She's been using you, boy. And you let her. You went and opened the door for her, didn't you? Now, now, it was already open a crack. And whose fault is that? We're morally corrupt, disease-ridden, old and stupid. Doesn't mean he had to open it all the way, goddammit. Ah, for... So tired. Built the farm close to the lake. A place of power. We had parties there, man. You, you should go there and have a party. That Bob Balder threw the app through the window. Hit that a hippie chick in the back of the head. 
15 stitches of the concussion. Bob's dead now. Leukemia. Stitches, snitches, and narcs, man. Bad scene. The Andersons, I'm ladies and gentlemen. Tired, so tired. Tor and Odin. The boys. All right. So we've got a moment to look around before things progress. Uh, let's see. I don't think I really got the perfect look around. I would love to play a Night Springs board game. I'm not even much of a board gamer, but Night Springs seems like there could be enough suitably weird stowed within the confines of something. As limited as board games. Gotcha. The docs got me looking after Wake here, but holler if they get too rowdy. I'll do that, Birch. Yeah, Birch. Yeah. Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants. And the story will come true. Take note. Slowly, our story unravels. But again, I'm on a fanboy, or get on my fanboy soapbox. Talk about how much I do I genuinely love. The been acting up. Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. The generator hadn't been activated, and there was no key. But, yeah, we'll get on my fanboy soapbox and say the story of this game and the way it engages you hey, is just wait. phenomenal. Why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. Hartman wanted me to write. I the white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, Wake, you stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? I didn't know what the chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Well, let's see if we can swing over here. Looks like we have fans of Night Springs all up in here. It's my store. I'm taking it. Night Springs on the Xbox, even. Good stuff. Fun game, if you remember. So you hear all the ruckus. Hartman kept talking. <coughs> Gary, the Grand Tour. Excuse he me. Was proud of the place. He went on and on about his hunting trophies, and Barry was impressed. But he was here on business. He raised his voice, cut through the monologue. Hey, Hartman, where's Al? Hartman stopped in mid-sentence, annoyed at the interruption. He nodded at the hulking orderly standing nearby. The man smiled and clapped a practice hand on Barry's shoulder. Hey, you leave Barry out of this, man. Despite him being pretty Barry at times, he is a good guy. About the only friend we've got, other than the deputy and 
Well, I guess the the lamp lady too. Sinclair looked bad. That wasn't a love tap. The crazy old fart hit her hard. And if she was one of Hartman's goons, she had it coming. I could get the, the key in the office. All yours, Sinclair. Tom. Seize your destiny. I had to get to Hartman's office. He had taken all my manuscript pages. That's where he'd be Come keeping them. Face the music, Birch. It's time to pay the piper. I have the keys. Why are you locking doors on me? We were on the road, man. You think we haven't seen punks like you before? The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me all along. Yeah, that's quite the picture. The uh. markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? He's more and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent. He's... Do you mean with you? No, not with me. No, never. I... Sometimes I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me, because at least that'd lead to a conversation he couldn't just march out of. But no. Tell me, Mrs. Wake, what would you say to him if he'd listen? <sighs> I don't know. I want to say, I look at you, and it's not you. Just some stranger who resembles you, looking out from behind your eyes. And I don't like that guy much, and now it's all going to go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No, no. I've tried, but he's not listening. If you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. Local maps, more of the paintings, manuscript page. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time. And he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. Do you hear me? I'm gonna shoot your crazy quack ass to shreds! Seriously! Do you Barry? have any idea? Ow! About time! Barry! Man, am I glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Yeah. I mean, no! The cops found me at Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else, I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, that fed gave me a real hard time. But I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. But he let me go, and then I get a call from Hartman that 
son of a bitch who tells me you're here and I should come pick you up, but when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's... what's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose after what she did to us. That'll teach her. Yeah, that's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal, we gotta get going. It is a, a berry level punishment, though. He's not a malicious guy. These were all the pages I had already. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back into the... Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea. Parker, shut up! Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just... Go! Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. I'm with you, Alan. I think that is certainly just dessert level of goodness. The dark presence would be on me in a moment. I had to find a way out. Alright, and with that, I think this will be a good jumping off point for this episode of Alan Wake. Uh, before we start getting into the nitty gritty of things. So if you liked the video, please be sure to press the like button down below. If you have any comments, questions, or critiques for me, you can leave those in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. This has been Alan Wake. I'm Doc Shocker. You've been great. Happy gaming.